Hi folks, Mr. Teslonian back here again. I want to take you through a much larger evaporative refrigeration system. Uh, right now, as you can see here, I have a nice five gallon jug up top. I'm going to go through and explain to you exactly how this works. Uh, right there in the front was a door. You can see the two sides are covered in cotton cloth, stretched over some stainless steel window frames. And I'm going to go ahead and explain to you what I've got going on here. On the last one that you saw, I had it wicking from the bottom up the sheet. Now it made it about three quarters of the way up most of the time in the dry environment uh, and would stop and this would be dry right from here down on the smaller version. So what I've done here is created a way for the wick to start up top and then wick its way down the sheet which is much more effective. And if you notice right here what I have is a, a piece of channel here. This is actually uh, from a curtain, a uh, window curtain with the aluminum uh, panels in it. And it's just a uh, channeled rod. I'm going to pull some of this cloth out of here to show you. As you can see here, it's just a piece of channeled aluminum rod. I stuck that up into the hose. And that's the same here on this side. So what we have here to create the wick is we have some extra t-shirt material that's stuck up above the frame. So what we do with that so we take that and we stick that right inside that channel, put that all back in there, just like that, nice and easy to do. Alright, so once this t-shirt material is all jammed into this channel again, what we have here is from the five gallon jug, goes down into that holder there and you'll see that it comes down, hits the T right there and then feeds both of those troughs evenly. And now on a hotter day I can adjust the flow of water to a little bit stronger by adjusting my lever here. I can turn it back for a cooler day when it's not evaporating so well. So it's a nice adjustable flow up here. It gravity feeds really well without over soaking the shirt. Does a very good job making sure that everything's going to stay nice and cool inside of there. Let me show you the door here. Let's come up, grab the door, open it up. You can see some cloth panels there on the sides. That makes a nice seal. Show you inside. I made this large enough that I could put four gallons of milk in there and keep them in a 96 degree day in the 60s, which is not going to make it last for very long, but for a few days longer than at 96. So you're actually getting preservation on the food. Now vegetables, things like that, are going to stay for a very long time inside of this box. Uh, the moisture in there and the cool temperatures will actually keep vegetables upwards of a month. Uh, so it's really good for stuff like that. Real simple to build. I just have cloth hinges, uh, cloth sides, and a cloth flap at the bottom to keep a nice seal. Now to make that seal even a little better, you can splash that with a little bit of water. That'll help seal it up a bit, swell the wood, swell the cloth. Uh, so there's your doorway into it. Really simple to build. And as you can see, like the last one, all I've really done is build just a wooden frame that goes up over the top, down the side, and around the bottom. The rest of it is just uh, window screens, which give me a second here. I'll pull out for you to get the cloth out of the top channel. Okay, so all you do here, reach over to one of the sides, if I can grab a hold of it, and you pull that out. And so here, as you can see on the back side, it's just a stainless steel window screen. I used other material to hold that cloth nice and tight on top of it. I left the screen in there. That stainless steel, once getting cold inside of that box, will actually help radiate some of that cool uh, back into that box, help keep it in there a little bit longer. And you can see the other side's just the same. So basically, you just have a wooden box with no sidewalls uh, on the two biggest sides. And you'd use those sidewalls to cover with any good cotton cloth. And you're going to have a refrigeration system that will drop you down into the 60s with no power needed. Now, the next videos on both the small one and this large one are going to include a CPU fan in the video. And that CPU fan will be actually mounted in two different ways in two different videos. One of the ways I found was to mount it up at the top up here, right in the center, pulling air out, which will create a draw inwards through the sheets. Uh, I'm reducing temperature with that from the 63, 64 degrees I typically hit down into about 60, 59 degrees. I have a feeling though that that is not the proper way to do that since moisture wicking from sweat actually wicks to the outside and doesn't let it go to the inside creating cool on the inside. So I'm also going to do a video with the CPU fan sitting on the outside here 
blowing across the outside of the, the panel. And that should actually probably produce even a cooler temperature than drawing the air through like a typical swamp cooler. Uh, I'm going to give that a try. I think that'll work. We'll see through the experiments later. Uh, today I'm entering into monsoon season here in Arizona, so our humidity is raising a bit. Uh, I may not get a good chance here for a few days with a hot sunny day to show you just how well this thing works. But I'll take you through this idea real quick and just show you how simple you could build this uh, for an evaporative cooling system without power. I mean this could be built in any desert environment. Uh, one of the projects I'm working on now is the opposite of evaporative cooling called condensating cooling or condensation cooling. Uh, that is actually going to work in a humid environment because uh, the water in the humid environment can actually be condensated onto pipes creating cool air inside the tubes. So I'm putting together one of those right now to make a uh, condensating refrigeration system and cooler for humid environments. Well until next time I hope you enjoyed. This is Mr. Tesalonian and the Tesalonian Man Show. Hi folks, Mr. Tesalonian back here again. I've made some updates and uh, some modifications to the evaporative refrigeration system and I want to take you through just what I've done here. So I'm going to walk up to this side and show you exactly what I've done to make sure this is a recirculating system. Uh, right here you can see as I get closer there's a tube. It's a black plastic tube drilled a, a hole in the corner right here and then put the tube up from the bottom. You can see I removed some of the wood material here and made a low spot in the wood also help gather some of that water. If I take you underneath there you can see the black piece of pipe coming up from the underside. It also arches goes up and on to the other side of this which I'll take you around and show you to the other corner over there at the other saturation screen. Right here you can see the same thing if I lift up this piece of shirt edge you can see the hole right there going into the black piece of pipe. I'll show you that from underneath. You can see it coming down there, meeting over to the other corner, coming down through the white pipe and over to this one. And both of those meet there and I'll show you on the other side what they're doing. Right there is the drip that I have coming out of the system. Now I can start slowing that down a bit now that I've got the shirts all moisturized and got everything uh, wettened. So I can start to slow down the flow with the valve up top on the upper tank. This way I'm not losing my water through the system other than what I'm losing through evaporation. So this is a, a re-catch as you can see I just kind of fired it up, started the bucket empty. I wanted to see just how much I was going to re-catch through this system, how much was lost it through evaporation. Curious on just how long five gallons of water, which I didn't just fill all the way up, I only put half of a jug in there. Uh, how long five gallons of water is going to last through this system. I have a feeling with the recirculation going on that we might even get a full week out of five gallons which would make for a pretty uh, efficient system here especially for people that live in a, a hot dry climate maybe even in third world nations. So there you go there's the quick and easy updates once again I'll just show you this side you can see the tube coming in right at the corner there and once again I'll zoom in for you you can see it over there right there uh, you can see this flashing chunk that I had to screw down right here all the way on both sides that helps make it so if the water rolls off the sheet towards it it'll stop most of it roll it back towards either one of the corners I have crowned the center of the refrigeration board here at the bottom you can see it's dry at the center I crowned the center with this piece by how I screwed it on that way water would roll to one side or the other and not just get caught up in the center because if it was bowed down in the center it would do just the opposite which might make it a little easier, you might only need one pipe. But for what I had, this is what I used. So once again, there's an update to an evaporative refrigeration system that is now a recirculating system. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, this is Mr. Tesalonian and the Tesalonian Man Show.